how we set up our, our benefits. Um, it's one of those areas, as Ray said, we're always looking at um, the potential of improving. So it's definitely a, an area that we can take uh, into further consideration. Stay there, Patty. She has one more. <laughs> Her second question is, why are we not allowed a day off for our birthday? I have seen other counties <laughs> that give employees a day off for their birthday. It sounds like one of my kids who thinks their birthday is a national holiday. Um, <laughs> Asked before and got the answer, it is because we get Columbus Day off. Maybe you can do a little myth busting on that. In all truths, uh, that particular county also got Cesar Chavez Day off and we don't. So maybe an evaluation of how these are uh, put in and which days we get off. It's pretty much the same answer. We're looking at our internal culture. We're also looking at what's standard practice in other organizations um, and then making those decisions in terms of of what um, holidays are going to be acknowledged. So it's one of those areas we're constantly looking at, striving to make improvements. So we'll, we'll continue to um, assess that. And I should remind everyone that the Board of Counties of Commissioners approved Christmas Eve as a holiday this year. So, yeah. So happy birthday. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I said so happy birthday. <laughs> and we all got Ray's birthday off this year, which was cool. Yes. Because it was Sunday. It was Sunday. Uh, <laughs> we did not have any additional questions in the Dear Adams boxes outside, but as we get into some of the previous questions, I'll let you all know that Ray has agreed moving forward for all employees who drop their questions in, we will periodically gather those questions up and then answer them in a live format on Workplace. So the video will be available live, it won't be edited so that people can go back and rethink answers. Ray's going to evaluate the questions, he's going to stand there, he's going to answer them and that will be posted on Workplace so you'll have an opportunity moving forward to hear these questions and answers at your convenience. So for today's purposes, uh, what are the reserved parking spaces in the conference center parking lot for? Ray, do you want to handle that one? Yeah, sure. So some of you may know that um, we actually have a, a task force, a joint task force uh, between the city of Bright and Commerce City that is actually housing uh, north in our conference center. And it is a um, sex trafficking task force. And so those reserves parking spots are for the investigators. Good question. Let's uh, stay here with uh some government center or just general employee questions, and we've got some specific to HSC. Uh, this one is, I'd like to know how AFSCME Council 76, a local uh, union, acquired my personal address. This looks like the county gave out personal information to a private company without my consent. And our attorney is here. <laughs> um, so I assure all of our employees, we are not giving out your personal addresses. Um, in fact, there is state law that says that is one of the things that is not public record and that we shall not provide. Um, so even when the district attorney's office or police departments ask us for home address information for you guys, we say no. Um, so my best guess is that they figured it out on their own. Um, Certainly, I think with email addresses, that's pretty easy to figure out, right? You can kind of get the pattern for how we establish our, our email addresses, but um, I do want to assure you that we did not provide that information to anyone. The next question, it says, I think there needs to be some clarification on lunch and learn classes. I was under the understanding that when you did a class like this, as well as a workout class or Toastmasters, that you use your lunch hour to do so. That doesn't seem to be how it is working in several departments in the county because people are still taking a lunch after the meeting, even managers and directors. I would like some clarification. Um, the lunch and learn are intended that you would attend lunch, uh, the program, and have lunch at the same time. When people are exercising flexibility around some of this, I, I, there could be a variety of reasons why that's happening, but the intent of these programs and working out those kinds of things is really that you take your lunch break for that purpose. All right, a couple of HSC specific questions here. Uh, the first one says, I feel there is a lack of security for employees who work on the first floor of the new building. The main entrance for all employees is on the first floor. The, there is high traffic in that area. There is absolutely zero security presence for those on the first floor, uh, AKA CFS. 
we feel, or at least I feel, this person writes, that the main focus is all on the second floor, which I understand the public. However, like previously stated, there's absolutely zero security on the first floor. Chris? So we've been working with the Westminster Police Department to address and improve our safety and security protocols. At the Human Services Center, I will tell you that the only available space that the public can access on the first floor of that building is in the business and training center. The remaining portions of where all of one person works on that first floor is behind either one, two, or three badge access security doors. So it, it really is, and as Westminster Police Department had communicated to us, in terms of safety and security, that building is a fortress. So. However, we are still working on improving our safety and security protocols. Hold, hold on real quick. And I'm going to ask Heidi to come up because I failed to bring her up and talk about some of the security stuff that we're doing. Uh, and I want to make sure that she has an opportunity to <laughs> convey that message. Um, so I, I know that security in all of our workplaces is a top priority for you guys and it is for us. And I've admitted this before and I will admit it again that we have not always demonstrated that and we have a lot of work to do to um, establish some protocols and procedures um, to ensure the highest safety in our buildings. I think Human Services Center, as Chris said, was designed completely around that and I think they've done a phenomenal job and Westminster PD has really helped um, get some procedures and training in place for those employees. We are a little behind in this building. We won't talk about how long we've been here, but um, we are working very hard on getting us up to speed in this building as well. Um, you have a committee um, that includes pretty much every department that is housed in this building um, and um, all the services, service departments to try and create better procedures and policies. Um, you know, for example, facilities is working very hard on establishing buttons in both Human Services Center and this building that allow us to lock all exterior doors at one time. Um, that's a function that's available for a person sitting at a computer right now who happens to have access to that, but we're trying to make it something that can be used in an emergency situation as well. Um, so we're working on that, we're working on more clearly defining our safety procedures and protocols for everything from tornadoes to the worst case scenario that there would be some type of an active shooter scenario in one of our buildings. Um, we have already rolled out some training and there's more coming on May 30th. Um, the sheriff's office has taken over jurisdiction of this building, which has been great for us in terms of we already have a relationship and a partnership with the sheriff's office. They are attending the committee that's meeting to talk about safety in all of our buildings um, and they've been very helpful. They are offering this active shooter training. I attended on the 16th. I thought it was useful information. Um, it's not mandatory, but for any of you who are interested, please attend. Um, you can sign up through Halogen or you can just show up. It's in the public hearing room. We've got plenty of space. Um, it's at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on the 30th. And we'll, we'll bring other dates back as well. And then our goal is as soon as we have these plans finalized for logistics, we will be rolling out training specific to this building, similar to what Human Services has already done, with making sure everyone in this building knows what you, are, what you need to do in an emergency situation. So that will be coming very quickly. Um, we also will be rolling out to all employees information about signing up for notifications. Um, what we have found is that best practice and really the best way to get information to our employees is to utilize your own cell phones. Um, the truth is most of us have cell phones on us most of the time. And so if we can get everyone signed up to get notifications by cell, we may not hit every employee, but hopefully, if it's not you, your, your coworker next door will get the notification that might say, hey, we're having a disturbance um, in the front lobby. Please stay away from the first floor right now. Anything like that that we might want to push out to employees um, but not necessarily get on the PA system and announce, hey, everybody. <laughs> um, so that's what we're looking to do. And more information will be coming out on that to make sure we get you all signed up. Um, and then key to... Um, our security plan going forward is that we are going to start asking that all employees have visible IDs. Um, and looking around the room, I see that a lot of you do. So for a lot of you, this will not be a change. 
Um, but for those of you who normally keep your ID in your pocket, um, that will be a change. And there's two reasons for that. One is your own security. I think, you know, it's much easier to tell who belongs here and who doesn't when you have something like this that we can all see. And it gives you that opportunity to maybe stop somebody in the hall and say, hey, can I help you with something um, that doesn't look like they belong here? If there were ever a mass incident, even if it's a tornado or damage to the building or something, for responding agencies and even for us as we're trying to make sure we know where everybody is, having these makes it so much easier for us to tell who's an employee and who's not. Um, and then it's also a customer service thing. Um, you know, when citizens come in the door and they see this, I mean, I'm sure you guys, like me, I, I get approached a lot and ask questions because it's obvious I work here. So I think that that's the other added benefit. So we are gonna be rolling that out as a policy um, for the organization that employees have visible IDs. So we appreciate your cooperation with that going forward. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, just for the record, if you want to join the All Employee Notification Group, you can pull out your cell right now. It is easy. You just open a text message, type in join Adams, and then send it to 30890. All that information's on both My Adams and Workplace. Both of them are incredibly searchable. So if you just type employee notifications into the search line, it'll bring you to that post, and you can do it uh, from your desktop right now. And Jim, are you planning on uh, recording that? The training active shooter training, yes. Thank okay. you for asking, Ray. On the 30th, we plan on recording one of those sessions and, of course, posting it on Workplace and making it available for employees at their convenience. We know we're entering vacation season, so we try to plan for a fair number of uh, folks being out of the office. So when we have important trainings like this, uh, look for them on Workplace and, uh, and my Adams as well. Uh, another HSC-related question is the Digital Globe parking garage is close to our employee entrance, and there usually aren't many cars there. <laughs> Go on. Uh, so would Digital Globe allow us to use their garage either free or for a small fee? Make it more than one word. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's no possibility for us sharing the Digital Globe parking garage, as a matter of fact, and this isn't new, so it wasn't something that they had decided to do after we moved in. They had been planning, I believe, Sean, for at least the last two or three years to put a fence up that would separate their property from, from our property. They work on a number of very high-profile projects and contracts, and as a result, uh, that building is, if we think any of our buildings are a fortress, that building literally is a fortress. There is no public access for that building or for that facility. And so I think in order to ensure that they keep everything as safe and secure as possible, they'll be putting in a fence. And so I don't believe there will be even any access to cross the property from that parking garage. But there, there is no possibility for us sharing that space. Thank you, Chris. And uh, one more, um, and this is the final question that we have here, but if you all have come up with some, we'll pass the mic around in just a moment. So um, this one says, it would be so nice to have some decent meat in the cafe at the HSC if prices are going to be this expensive. Pre-cooked pink slime masquerading as a hamburger is unacceptable. Made to order burgers and an employee discount would be appreciated. So. Just to summarize, we'd like better products and we'd like you to subsidize it. Go. Well, at least they're getting meat. So <laughs> I will say that. No. So it just, we had this question earlier and to talk about it um, with Alicia. Uh, that's certainly, I know Jeff Bowman and Alicia, they've been working with the current vendor as well as that current vendor is out at Front Range Airport on helping to work through some of these issues. So if the meat isn't tasting very good, that's helpful for us to go back to the vendor and let them know that it doesn't taste very good and it's green. And so we will work on that. We will work on ways to, to provide that feedback with them. We do, I believe there are standing meetings with the vendor, which we have never had in the past. So they meet, I think on a quarterly basis and we talk about the front range location, um, the Justice Center, as well as the Government Center and the Human Services Center. So we'll certainly provide that feedback to them. And obviously we'll have a better sample size this afternoon when we're at the Human Services Building to kind of show 
uh, hands who's satisfied with the food. Obviously, you get one that may not be representative of all, but it is a good question. And thanks to whoever submitted all these. Remember, we're going to do it all the time, quarterly. We're going to have Ray answer these questions so you can submit them anonymously and then watch for the answers as we move forward. Anybody in the audience want the microphone for a question? Okay, I think I always have a question at these <laughs> meetings, but um, I love the substation out front, but I understand it's not manned full time. Is there any possibility of having that done? I, I just think that is, considering building security, that is just one of the most obvious things that, that could be done. So. Um you're right that the substation is not manned full time. Um, when the sheriff's office took over jurisdiction of this building, um, we thought having a presence, um, and to be honest, even having the signage that the sheriff's office is here is not unhelpful um, in terms of, of preventing issues. But we do agree that um, having a full time presence would be helpful, similar to what they have at the Human Services Center. And um, Ray and I are, are working on that, and we will um, be bringing a proposal to the Board of County Commissioners to look at what that would cost and, and whether that's something that we could do. Um, but in the meantime, the Sheriff's Office is trying to get over here occasionally. I don't think it's all that often. Um, I think sometimes it's after hours on weekends when we're not here. But they are, um, the unit that works in this area is coming over here to do paperwork. And, and I will tell you that they're, they're doing training over here and they're becoming more and more familiar with our building, which is good to the extent that there is an issue. And, um, I will tell you, too, that they have made it very clear to us that if there's a situation or you're afraid of anything, just call 911, and they will deal with it. Um, they really wanted to emphasize that we should not be worried about, is this really serious, or what if I'm overreacting, that that's their job, and that they will come and they will take care of it. So. And um, Commissioner Odorisa wanted me to remind you that there is a human trafficking unit um, now housed in our facility, um, and they're armed. So I mean, to the extent that there was an issue, I'm sh I guarantee you they would be willing to help, <laughs> even though this is not their jurisdiction, so. Any other questions? Okay, we got another one. I'm gonna get my steps in. I'm okay. Well, it needs to be for the broadcast so everyone can hear it, at, so they know what you're asking. Good morning, my name's Lourdes Navarez, and I am out of the Children and Family Center. This is a real hot topic in our division is the new mileage. We work beyond 430. Some workers um, are out placing children till 9 p.m., work on Saturdays uh, to meet the needs of our clients. So um, it's not generally a question, <clears throat> more so a comment that um, in hopes that those new rules are evolving um, based on some of the feedback that's coming from the employees. Uh, that, um, for instance, if they work on a weekend and they have to come into the office before, they would be able to, to claim that mileage. So now folks are wanting to rearrange schedules or meeting times or meeting places in order for them to get paid for that mileage. And instead of coming into the office to do a supervised visit for a family, they're doing it at a local McDonald's. Um, so that's one of the examples. Um, but if, if that, that will be a hot topic this afternoon at HSC for sure. Um, so I can tell you, we've looked at this for uh, a, a really long time. The IRS prevents us from allowing anybody to claim those miles. So it's not necessarily an Adams County regulation. It is that we are actually making sure we're doing a better job of enforcing what the federal rules are as driven by the Internal Revenue Service. The biggest change, and I know, trust me, because folks are not shy, the biggest change in the mileage reimbursement is, is we can't reimburse people who would, on what would be their normal commute to work. So even if they're making a visit or they're stopping by for a meeting, that would be a part of their normal commute to work. We don't feel that those miles would be justifiably reimbursable because you would actually accrue those miles anyway 
on your normal commute to work. And so that was one of the biggest fundamental changes in terms of how this practice impacts human services because we were reimbursing. Not everybody was claiming those miles, but for the ones that were, it was allowable for us to reimburse. And that has been one of the bigger significant changes. But the other changes are primarily driven by the Internal Revenue Service. Any other questions? All right, of course, this is how it plays out, right? So <laughs> back and forth we go. Todd's over here. Be careful. Someone's going to trip me, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Todd in ITI. Uh, this is actually, I need to set this up a little bit. Uh, I have some friends that are long-term residents of the Riverdale Corridor, 123rd and Riverdale. And they're huge, I guess, locally. I don't know this. They know I work for the county, so guess what? I get to hear it. They're hugely concerned about the development while I see the value of the development up and down the corridor on that two-lane road. But the high school and everything else along that two-lane road, they have huge concerns about how transportation infrastructure is going to be caught up to deal with the development in the corridor. And as I think about that and lay out, and you guys have laid out some wonderful plans across infrastructure development across the county, I'm wondering what pops into my head is, are we being as leading edge which tr with our transportation development ahead of the curve so that we're not part of the greater problem that Denver is struggling with, with traffic infrastructure as a whole with the development? Great question and comment. Um, one of the things I failed to mention is that um, the Board of County Commissioners uh, applied for an infra grant, which uh, gives us the ability uh, to put a flyover on 120th and 85. And so that's one of the major reasons why we're pushing the entrance uh, to 120th and Park Boulevard. In addition to that, we are also putting a roundabout on the existing uh, en entrance today off 124th and, and um, uh, Park Boulevard and so uh, transportation issues remain a priority for us and we have I will tell you I meant through public meetings we've hosted and I know several of the commissioners I know Commissioner Hodge um, has been really instrumental in terms of really trying to meet with those residents along the Riverdale corridor we've engaged them in this process and so um, it's important it's part of every project we do we have uh, citizen engagements but I appreciate you bringing that forward Thank you. And then Brian has something. I just we, wanted, it's up here on the on the slide, just to reiterate, like Ray was mentioning, so that road right off of 120th is Park Boulevard, that, that that road will then be paved. And, you know, Sean and his team is working on that right now, the engineering study. So again, pushing that traffic off of 120th with the roundabout that Ray was talking about as well is certainly going to greatly improve the traffic flows within that area. Um, and in addition to that, that interchange is going to cost $60 million, and it's a joint partnership between, you know, all of the jurisdictions, not just us. So the City of Commerce City has this as a priority for them, City of Brighton and Thornton as well, and Adams County, and CDOT. And one other partner is the Union Railroad Pacific, or Pacific Railroad, so. So that question really illustrates why in communications we want all of our employees to know as much as possible about what's going on in our community from the, from the county standpoint because you are our first ambassador because Todd lives by people and he works by the county. I can promise you he's not the only one who has heard from a resident, a neighbor, someone at church who said, well, wait a minute, you work for the county, what's going on here? So we know that you are our ambassadors in the community. You are the first people that your friends, neighbors, relatives are gonna to come to about county related business. So that's why we try like crazy to inform you about things that are going on outside of your department so that at least you can have that general information to engage these folks when they come up to you with concerns or questions. So um, try to you know, read up on my Adams and workplace and talk to people and have a better comprehensive, just general understanding of what's going on so then you know, if you don't know, at least you know who to point them to. Um, because we all know that everyone's supposed to be an expert just because you work for the county, right? That's the way people view you. Um, do we have any more questions in the crowd? Yes, we do, right down here. We have two. I'll get to you in just a second, Lynn. Hi, my name's Debbie Cornella, and I love the paths here at this facility. I love uh, Prairie Center's paths. Are there any plans to connect the paths so that residents can bike to work? So, I'm trying. So, uh, you mean this trail out here? 
or what just Yeah, you know, one of the things as part of the regional park, uh, Riverdale Regional Park Master Planning process, uh, we have this beautiful amenity just east of us called Bar Lake State Park. And so we are looking at ways to connect Bar Lake um, State Park to um, our trail corridors, whether it's the South Platte um, or um, inner trails within the city of Bright. And so that is a topic of conversation that's going on right now. Oh, oh to our building? Okay, I, that is a good question, I don't know. City of Brighton, would, we would have to work with the City of Brighton, but go ahead. One of the policies I'd like to have our, the commissioners start taking a look at is making Adams County more walkable yeah. and more able to use our paths to get back and forth. I live in Thornton and I can go from where I live all the way to Cherry Creek from a path for my house. I'd like to be able to have a, a path that I could go from my house to the government center. You know, um, it's something that we need, to st we need to start looking forward in regards to that. Because cars are getting more and more expensive um, and traffic is harder and harder to, to man maneuver and we need to start making it more walkable and make, making it a little more bicycle friendly. That's All right. great. But we will definitely, I'll work with Nathan, um, our parks director, and um, the city of Brighton uh, as well, and we'll, we'll have this conversation. Because I think it's important, as you mentioned. Thank you. All right, Lynn has another question. And uh, anybody next after Lynn? Well, this one's for Jim. <laughs> 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 what happened to our weekly news reports on workplace? So those were bi-weekly, and um, <laughs> that, uh, what happened is we hit busy season, and um, you know we, we try to communicate in as many ways possible with the news. The video news feature is fun, it's fantastic, but when we hit February, March, and April, it is swamp season for our folks, and so it's all hands on deck for video production, graphic design, and the news is something we really want to do, but it takes about two or three days to write it, wrangle up somebody to do it, and then produce that, and it's just not a priority for us to be able to flip a, a fun news feature when we're putting out all the news in an employee email on Workplace, on My Adams. I want to get back there. Maybe we need to hire more people. I don't know. but. <laughs> Um, we are uh, obviously marketing everything for the Adams County Fair. We do ACMCYA at this time of the year. We do the scholarship dinner from last night. Uh, there's a lot of other projects that go on. So this is, this is the time where a lot of our departments, who are all of our clients, are trying to jam a bunch of stuff in before summer. Right, because that's vacation season. So we have a lot of really important meetings. We have a meeting tonight, a town hall meeting. So our department is really busy trying to promote all of these external things and then handle all of the projects that you all want us to do, whether it's a cover for your brochure or it's a last minute request from Ray, which never happens. Um, <laughs> So yeah, our plan was to uh, get those back up and running um, right after we clear this. And thank you for asking, Lynn. Hopefully we can get them in June. And to be honest with you, one of the things that would be great if we had more volunteers, because again, um, that takes part of the, the production process is me hunting someone down who will be willing to do it. Um, and, and we've had a couple of folks that were nice enough to do it. So if you are listening to this or you are in this room and you are willing to be a participant in that process, I would love to have a list of names that I could just click off and say, hey, you're doing it this week, you're doing it that week. So thanks for the question, Lynn. Perhaps we should have a sign-up sheet on my Adams or something. Yeah, I was just wondering um, if you guys had ever considered using, I'm not super familiar with the building, but um, possibly empty rooms to do like an in-home or in-house daycare um, and not even like a free daycare but just like at no cost of the county type of situation but just you know especially like new moms being able to come back to work sooner <laughs> being able to see their kids during lunch that type of thing absolutely you bring up a good point this was raised at coffee with uh, the executive leadership team and i do know that um, our commissioner eva henry also brought this forward in a study session and our staff and people in culture and, and 
are currently looking at that as an opportunity. Uh, we need to do, um, and we're working with facilities and Sean in terms of our facilities master plan to see if we could actually, because we do have some vacant space that was just recently vacated by the Adams County Housing Authority. And so that's all part of the process and we are looking into that, but it is a priority and I think Commissioner Henry wants to also address this. Yes. Our families for, for, for our employees are very, very important, and I want you all to know that. I think we need to emphasize the fact that families should always come first. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I've been pushing for, Ray, for the last five years is paid maternity, paternity, adoption, and foster leave because we have to make a priority for our children. And I, I notice older people that are my age who aren't planning on any more kids, it's still important to our society that we value those who are having children. And it is really important that we make sure that they feel comfortable enough to take time off. I actually had a friend um, have to go back to work two days after she gave birth. And my daughter had um, a child a year, uh, three years ago, and she actually tore her bladder during the delivery. And there would have been no way she could have gone back to work in three days. But if you can't afford to take the time off, you know, you have to go back to work. And that's just where it's at. And we've got to start putting a priority on our communities and our families. We have one, more. one more down here. Thank you. Um, my kids play club sports. So we often travel throughout the I-25 corridor different cities, and we go to Aurora Sports Park and Douglas County Fairgrounds and have these beautiful sports facilities. Why doesn't Adams County have such thing? I know this is, this is a priority of Commissioner Odorisha, so I'm gonna let him address first and then I will come in afterwards. <laughs> well, I, I think it's important to note that uh, some of the places in Adams County, a big portion of our community in Adams County uh, relies a lot either on the cities or the actual rec districts like Highland Hills. But then we also have a significant portion of the county that doesn't have that at all. And that's the part that really is, is difficult for us is that um, there's a significant portion of folks who live in unincorporated Adams County that may not, that are not in Highland Hills that simply don't have any recreation facilities at all that are provided by the government. Because Adams County, we focus on parks, open space, and the nature, we don't have the active rec piece within the county, that's because the cities and the special district does that. Um, so what I'd like to do is see if we can try to keep pushing to either get the rec districts to come in or if we can do more um, uh, to address that. Now that's more of administrative as far as why do the, can we get more facilities there? One of the things that we're looking at is seeing if we can, because we've had this question before, is can we do more like at the regional park? Um, and other areas to do that. And I think if you also look, Thornton is, is doing some of this with some of their uh, investment in their fields. Uh, Commerce City has done a significant amount of investment over at the uh, soccer stadium. And so we do have these pockets in the cities, but as far as the county leading the way on it, we just haven't historically led the way on rec, but I still think we can still try to encourage and work together with those partners to try to increase the amount of recreation in our community for sure. You know, and the only thing I will add is that um, the city manager of Brighton, I don't know what city you live in, but uh, they are looking at a multi-purpose um, recreation facility out in this area. So hopefully that addresses if they are able to get that launched. And Commerce City's new rec yeah, and Commerce City's new rec center uh, is, I think, open just down the street as well. I don't know what city you live in. Do you live? City. Oh, Commerce City, okay. I, I also want to put a plug out there. Um, our parks and open space tax. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't put a lot of priority on active fields. Um, but it's going to be going up um, here in the next few years because it's about to expire the tax, which provides a lot of our parks and open space throughout Adams County, including our municipalities. Um, I, I would, when we put it on the ballot, I would like to see where we put more of an emphasis on the um, active part of it, which would be playgrounds and sports fields and things like that. So that way we could start using that tax for those kind of things. All right, we have another question back over here. And for those of you who are watching and cannot see who is sitting in front of me, these are the folks that make sure that we work in a palace. Round of applause. I've worked in this 
I've worked in this building for more than four years and it looks exactly the same every day that I walk in. It's unbelievable. There's a lot of foot traffic. There are a lot of employees. You all do amazing work. And you have a question. So. Thank you. <laughs> and we have that Tuesday, it's um, New Year's Eve or we get that Monday off or so we had this conversation and the board uh, approved Christmas Eve um, as a uh, holiday. And so New Year's, I'd have to look at the calendar, do you? That lands on a Monday. Yes, yeah, yeah, so no, we are not off on that day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was told that if you pick up a phone, if there's an emergency, if you pick up a phone in one of the offices, and you dial 911, it doesn't go to 911. Is that true? Um, no. And as a matter of fact, at the active shooter training on the 16th, the sheriff's office tested it out um, and picked up this phone and dialed 911. Um, and it went straight to ADCOM, to our um, communication center. So it should be that any phone in this building, if you pick up the phone and dial 911, it should go straight to um, the dispatch center. OK. So, and, and it also, just so you guys know, it, it sends, um, there's an automatic system that sends notification to several of us in the building that a 911 call has been made. And then um, your front desk staff make sure that um, they follow up on that to make sure if, the, if it was an emergency, if it wasn't, because sometimes we do it accidentally, right? That, that they spread the word that it was not an incident. So when the sheriff's office did it down here, I had to run to the front desk and say, but it's not an incident, we were just, we were just testing the system, so. Okay. Um, can we have more options to train in other departments to like grow more in the? Yeah, we have a real broad um, program now through LEAD offering a lot of, of classes um, and programs for employees to attend. We're always looking for suggestions. If there, there are classes you're interested in, you can certainly reach out to us. Um, we're also looking at creating other opportunities for um, employees to shadow. If, they, if you have an interest in a particular area, definitely working with uh, people in culture, we'll make those connections and see if we can help you start moving in that direction. Um, there's a really strong commitment toward employee development, and so we are really here to support you in those, in those efforts. Patty, I know we we spotlighted this in our previous tier four where we had an employee who was working, working in human services who's now at the DA's office. Uh, who specifically should they email about this opportunity to shadow? Who in your department would be the best person to connect with? At this point, I would suggest you email um, Heather McDermott, and then we'll make the proper connections with um, the business partners in human resources and get, get that connection. Great, thanks. <clears throat> I think it's also important to note that a lot of these internal services that we're trying to provide employees, uh, in particular personal and professional development, uh, whether it's tuition reimbursement or the internal training, um, we want to know if, if there's ever discouragement by your management from you participating. That's important for us to know about because um, there's a commitment on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners and the leadership up here that that those services and opportunities are available to the employees. And we don't want to, um, we need to know if there's ever a time where uh, you feel like you can't do it. We all have jobs, we have primary duties here, I get that, but also uh, we, are, we are deliberately making an effort to expand opportunities for employees through the external tuition reimbursement and the internal professional development. So uh, we need to know uh, if you feel like that there are any barriers to access to those. Thank you. And I'll just add, um, I, at the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned a tier structure, tier one, two, three, and four. And for the first time this past year, we have convened over, I think it's between 200 and 300 supervisors, managers, and above um, all together, and we're meeting on a quarterly basis. And so this is a topic uh, that comes up all the time. And so just want you to know, uh, we've increased our communications with all of the supervisors and managers in the organization. All right, we're running out of time a little bit. We have one more question. Mikey's got one. Yeah, I was asking, this is Mike Lovato. Uh, I work for EBS. I was just wondering, wondering on the benefits on the sick time 
when we max out on the sick time uh, where the extra additional time goes to. Currently, currently the way it's structured is when you hit the, the maximum, you just stop accruing. That It just stops accruing. And that is definitely an area where we've heard from employees. The board has expressed a strong interest in how we can create more flexibility around how our employees use leave. So um, during the focus groups, uh, Matt sought input from employees on some suggestions. Um, we've looked at other organizations, and we're in the process right now uh, as a team we're developing some recommendations to take before the board in terms of how we can create that flexibility with regard to um, how you use leave, if there's an opportunity to cash out, you know, if you hit maximums and, or even before, then we haven't really designed the program, but just building overall flexibility in, in how people use leave. Yeah, because I was just wondering, because we did earn that. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering where it was going. <laughs> Great. Good question, a good one to wrap up on everyone. Thank you so much for your questions. Ray, you want to wrap us up? Sorry. Again, I just want to thank you for taking the time to, to join us this morning. Uh, these meetings are really significant. And again, um, as you can see, um, we are very proud of all the work that is currently going on. And it's all because of you, uh, to echo Commissioner Henry's remarks. You know, and so I just want to thank you. And you know, I think everyone deserves a round of applause for all your hard work and commitment to the citizens we serve. So thank you. And we'll stick around um, as a team if you have any individual questions.